Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. I'm so blessed. See, I don't take these things for granted. You know, some of you don't understand how God, because I've, I've had people ask me all those questions many times. Say, Pastor Atubo, how do you keep your consistency in doing these things you do? I wish I could tell you, I wish I could say, it's, it's by my strength or it's by this formula. No, it's all the Lord's. I'm telling the truth, it's the Lord's. I, I have a commitment. As long as he gives the word, I will preach it. Praise God. It doesn't matter if it's one person that is listening or the whole world is listening. As long as God is giving his word, I will preach. Praise God. Now, now, what am I doing? I'm doing exactly what he says to do those good works that he has preordained that we should walk in. You see that now? That's exactly what I'm doing. But then, so, so when, when I get your comments, when I get your testimonies, they only confirm that the Lord was right. See? So that's why I encourage you, write to us. Let us know how this message or this, this broadcast is affecting your life. And also, I encourage you to share. Don't keep it to yourself. Share. Go to our YouTube channel. Like it. Don't just like it. Subscribe. To our youtube channel I encourage others to subscribe to there are lots of materials there that will you can i'm telling you 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 can a baby christian can stay on our youtube channel and grow to anything he wants to become i'm telling you the truth thank you lord jesus praise god before going to today's broadcast can we make requests for our daily bread hey how many of you prayed at night mm -hmm. did you praise god oh bless the lord oh my soul and David said, bless the Lord and do not forget all his benefits. That's what we're going to ask right now. Are you ready? Join me in faith and say, Father, I demand for today's benefits, my daily bread. And I receive it from you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I shared on Monday with you about praying at night. Now, it just came to my spirit to share this with you. If you're struggling to do, why don't you get someone to, to partner with you? Say, hey, you know what? Um, I want to be praying at night and, I, and I've been struggling doing so. So, let's have a deal. Can both of us pray at night? Oh, yeah. How do we do it? I'll call you up at 12 midnight. Or you call me. If you don't hear from me, you call me. And we're going to pray on the phone together. Oh, yeah. That sounds cool. Praise God. Yeah. Please do. Please do. God is giving strategies on how to maintain peace on the earth. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now we'll go to our text, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Hey, I love this. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. There is a work God prepared beforehand. Now, that's what I was sharing with you yesterday. You see, what happens is this. The Holy Spirit is, is here and the Holy Spirit is in us. He is in us and he is with us. Jesus confirmed that. See, he said to his disciples, he said, for you know him. He shall be in you and he shall be with you talking about the holy spirit and and this holy spirit is doing no other work in us but to bring us into the image and likeness of god he wants us to be like the father exactly like the father so we can boldly say like Jesus, if you have seen me, you've seen God. There's nothing else to see. Huh? Yeah. He wants every one of us to be bold enough to make that statement. Because that's the mission. Let us make man. And that's what I told you, I think last week or so, he made that statement with so much audacity. How could God say that? You know, I remember, I think I've shared this on this broadcast before. My, my, you know, a dear friend I had, you know, back in school then. 
such a wonderful sister. You know, so she came to me one time and said, have you seen this scripture before that says, as he is, so are we in this world. I thought about it, as he is, so are we. I said, that cannot, I boldly said to her, that, that was many years ago, I was still young in faith. I said, that cannot be in the scriptures. He said, no, that I, I've seen a scripture like that. I said, where? I said, I can't remember where, but I know I read something like that. I said, nah. You know what was on my mind? God cannot make the mistake of saying that kind of thing. How? As he is, so are we in this world. Oh, I can't try that. Praise God. Oh, malakusa bread defendi filifarka edibusti. <laughs> Let me show you that scripture. For some of you, you're like, <clears throat> hmm, me too, I've not seen it. Now, this 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 has happened many, many years ago. <laughs> John, first John, first, first, first John. Verse 17. First John chapter 4 and verse 17. I want you to see this. It's a love has been perfected among us in this that while that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world praise god and i was telling you that, that the story of how this this sister had asked me then I said, I found it. I said, no, I don't think you got it right. And and now, what she insisted. And so I said, okay, I'm going to check because I had this concordance then. I said, I'm going to check. So I went, I can't remember if we did it together. No, I did it alone. I think I did it alone. And then I checked my concordance. You know, this strong, exhausted, that, that, that's the stick. Where is God's own? Thank God for uh, technology today. You know, just with your phone, bam, bam, you can find anything you're looking for. But those things were good. The, 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 those days of Dick's Bible. If you don't have a Dick's Bible, you've not started. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Now then, so I saw the scripture. I looked. I, 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 yeah, I remember now. <laughs> I, I stood up. I said, Lord, you can't make this mistake, oh. <laughs> you're good though, brah. We like this as he is. So are we no, I, I mean, you should have said, so have we been made. So are we in this world. Who wrote this? John. John the beloved. <laughs> I meditated on this. I say, God, is this for real? Is this your mind? Is this a mistake? You know, I went to, I said, I found that scripture. Praise <laughs> God. Yes, it's there. As he is. Now, now, look, here's the mindset of what he said. He says, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Some people are scared of judgment. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, you're bringing us into this. You are bringing us into this, and I'm not going to shy away from it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woo, glory. <laughs> Praise God. Ah, like Anina, and this. My heart is indicting a good matter, I'm telling you. It's a good matter, very serious matter. Hmm. So he says, Our love is perfected. For what reason? So that we'll have boldness on the day of judgment. He's not saying we'll wait on that day of judgment to know our faith. No, no, no. He says he, he, the, the whole plan is on the day of judgment, we have boldness. So, oh, judgment day is tomorrow. You know, there are lots of believers who say, you know, <laughs> you, you say, oh, uh, the trumpet, you know, I remember making a joke you know, a few days ago with someone. You know, someone had changed his looks. Like, whoo, what's going on? So I was telling someone there, I said, hey, are you sure this guy did not hear, pam, you know, the first part of the trumpet, you know? And we all laughed over it. So imagine if someone just hears, um, 
Now, I'm not saying that's how the trumpet is going to sound. Of course, the trumpet is going to sound in our hearts. You know that now. Now, praise God. So, imagine if you or somehow you just know Jesus is coming tomorrow. And then you find, ah, hey, let me clean up. Let me clean up. Hey, what? You see, it, 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 sorry. If you have to think that way at that time, uh, you might not go with him. I'm telling you, you might not go with him. Because see, your life is not fulfilling his word. Now here he says, so that we will have boldness in the day of judgment. So here, judgment is going to be tomorrow. Say, wow, whoa. Right? Can still be today. You know how school can be in those days. Like, exam is starting on Monday. Ah, hey, have I covered everything? Have I covered everything? But those who follow the lectures and study ahead will tell you, well, even if the exam is ready, let it come today. See, so those who follow don't have a problem. It's those who just attend classes, mm, they are, uh, attend class. Ah, I have a lot of work. Where will I start from? Ah, so they feel, okay, now they have to go to school again. Now by themselves, now of course, to read everything that they were taught. See that now? It's the same way we live our lives. Those who are just living their lives and then Sunday they come and do the little thing and go back. Another Sunday they come and do the little thing. And when they hear, uh, the Lord is, ah, oh, where is my oil? Where is that? The ones that will be looking for their oil. But the ones who are serious about this business have carried the oil that will last them a lifetime. Praise God. Yes. So that's the mindset with which he made this statement. So that on the day of judgment, when you think of the day of judgment, you think about it with boldness. I remember, I think I shared this on this, this broadcast. Now that's what the, the, I was saying, thank you Holy Spirit for. Because while I was looking at this, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to talk about this, what I'm going to share with you. Twice I've had these um, thoughts seriously in my mind. Now, sometimes as believers, we don't really have a stand concerning death. See, what is God's position about death and, and dying? Christian is dying. It's, I know it's a very sensitive thing to talk about, but because um, those of us that God have revealed the truth to, shy away because of the sensitivity of it you know sometimes you're like you know what just stay on your truth yourself but so the more you do that because paul says how can they believe on him on whom they have not heard so if they don't hear they will not believe and how can they hear without being sent or without being a preacher or something like that and how can they um, be a preacher without being sent you know, you know that so if we don't talk about this people will not hear and if they don't hear they will not believe so this is why this is important I'm going to share with you 1999 I had this experience when I was trying to believe God to walk in divine health okay and before then I've always had this yearly sickness every year I must be admitted in the hospital for um, four days to one week or thereabouts. I did this almost all through my secondary school days. Now, I think as I was getting older, uh, the admission stopped, but then the sickness will still come. So, because we know the drugs to get now, so just go out like so. So, I began to examine a lot of things and comparing my experience with the teachings and thank god by then god began to expose me to the raw teaching of his word and i bless god for people like um, pastor chris Oyakilume who who took the bone by the horn because that was the my first experience of pure faith teachings it is from those it is from from his teachings that i began to i began to get to know about people like kenneth copeland and and every other faith 
many should have been of immense blessing in my life. So I began to look at this and look at my life. I said, no, this is not working out. And so I began to deliberately take certain steps to see that my life is exactly what the word says it is. And so now, remember this yearly thing that happens. So I like, no, one of it is this. I have to deal with this. So I remember then, I was so sick. And I said to myself, you are not going to take drugs. Now, I was in school when, when I got sick. And so, somehow, this thing happened about the time we were just starting our exams. So I think I missed one of the exams and then my friends had to bundle me to the hospital and then they gave me this injection. Now, my mind was fixed as in, look, nothing else matters but the word of God. If this cannot be proved in my life, then come on, what are we doing? Let me know and dump it. That was my mindset. So now they took me to the hospital, they gave me injections. I got a bit better. I was able to write up the remaining exams. And now we moved from there, went home. And for the first time, this sickness came back the same year. Never happened. I used to suffer that once a year. So a few, like a month later, it came back. Mm, I said, now is the time. Now, I refused to take, no matter what anyone said to me, and my parents saw my health deteriorating and they were really concerned. Oh, you must take drugs. I deceived them. Okay, I've taken the drugs, but I didn't. So I kept going down and down. Now, I wasn't doing what I was doing ignorantly. Don't get me wrong. I was fully aware of what I was doing. I wasn't doing what the preacher told me to do. No, I had gotten this thing in my heart. <laughs> So one night, I was so weak, and then I heard a voice. What if you die doing what you're doing? And I thought about it for a moment, and this was my response. God in heaven knows I lie not. I said to myself, I said, if you die, you will go to heaven. Now, there was no doubt in my heart concerning that. Till, to the, till this moment, there is no doubt in my heart concerning where I belong to. No doubt. I'm not trying to make heaven. I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm not saying it because the word says so. I'm not quoting the word. I'm telling you what I'm telling you. I'm a citizen of heaven. If you're not bold enough to... And I'm not saying say it too. I'm saying carry the consciousness in your heart because of the experiences and encounters you've had. This is not something we just say believe by faith. No, no. So I said to myself, if you die, you go to, you're going to go to heaven. And when you go to heaven, you're going to see Jesus. I say, yeah, I'm going to see Jesus. And that's all I believed. You know? I'm going to see Jesus. And when I see Jesus, I only have one question for him. I said, Lord, what didn't I do right? Why am I here? This is what I was trying to achieve. Why am I here? And I believe Jesus will give me an answer, which is true. And when he gives me the answer, he says, son, this is what you didn't do right. I'm going to say, thank you, sir. Now, Lord, can I go back? Yeah, I'm telling you what I thought. Can I go back? And then I thought to myself, but they said, if you go there, the glory of the place, you can't even remember to come back. I said, not me. As these thoughts will come, I'll, I'll reply. I said, not me. What am I going to do there? I belong there. I'm telling you what I'll say. I belong there. So I'm not, I'm not in a hurry to go there. I want to be here and finish the work. So I'll say to the Lord, Lord, please, I need to go. I will trouble him until he says, hey, okay, just go, just go. Now, I was here on earth, making up my mind for the praise God. And I settled that in my heart. And there was so much peace. And as though 
peace, ready to die. I laid down there. Then the word of the Lord came to me. And that's how I got my healing. Praise <laughs> God. Now, what am I saying to you? Because my time is up. I can't finish this story. You have to carry it on till tomorrow. I don't want to exceed my time. But I'm going to stop here and continue exactly from here tomorrow. Remember, we're talking about being in the image and likeness of God. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.